So um, I was actually pretty knowledgeable about the subject of women's health care before I started writing this paper just because I am a woman and I need health care. And so I think that it's really important for everybody to understand their rights and what they have access to in this political climate. So I had done a little bit of research on it um, beforehand. Um, so I came into this paper knowing pretty well what I wanted my thesis to be, and so it didn't change over the course of the paper. My thesis is that all women, regardless of sexual activity, should have access to contraceptives that are funded by the federal government. Um, and I stood by that throughout the entirety of the essay, and it's something that I really believe in. Um, I was pretty aware of the topic of women's health care before I began my research, so I was pretty opinionated on the fact that women need proper health care and um, easy access to it. And so the only way my thesis really changed is I just got more specific into Planned Parenthood specifically because women's health care is a very broad subject. Um, and through reading all these opinionated articles, I kind of saw the other side. However, my opinion on the matter really didn't change. And my thesis is that um, Planned Parenthood should continue to be funded because of the many benefits it offer, offers to women, um, not just in America, but globally. And so my opinion really didn't change. So I was definitely a bit hesitant at first to do um, this topic on women's health care because I really don't know much about politics. I don't really pay attention to it. Um, and I know definitely like in this current situation that we're in right now, uh, women's health care is a really big um controversial topic going on right now and I you know should be paying attention to that because I am a woman and you know this is going to be definitely uh, relevant to me in the future because of when I need to you know worry about health care and stuff like that um, but then I wanted to do something different and like kind of out of my comfort zone for a research paper because I don't really do a lot of like political side kind of papers um, so I decided to take this on right now uh, since it's a really big uh, debate. Um, and then while working on my thesis, I was able to find out more about women's health care and um, all like the crazy stuff that's happening around it. And I had no idea that even that was going on. So, and I'm sure that if I didn't even know it was going on, some people don't know either. So I think that was what made the essay really interesting for me. Um, the source that I found most helpful in my essay was definitely the Planned Parenthood website. And it's because I read a lot of controversial and, like, opinionated articles regarding Planned Parenthood, and it said kind of what they did. Um, and a lot of that information, information differed depending on the source just to kind of, like, prove their point and back them up. So the website was helpful because I could actually see what Planned Parenthood does and what it offers and, like, where they're located and how it helps and affects people in that area. So at the beginning of my essay, I open up about the ACA, which is the Affordable Care Act. And I opened up with this because I knew there's a lot of controversy surrounding it, especially with women's health care and the Trump administration. And I wanted to use it as like my first attention getter uh, to get people's opinions, uh, you know, started and to know what and to make them intrigued about what I was going to say about it. And the source that I used um, to talk about the ACA um, was written by an author named uh, Janelle George, and she comments on how uh, there is a bill being introduced by the Trump administration, which is the ACA, um, that would leave millions of women with pre-existing conditions uh, without any protection to get affordable health care coverage um, that could potentially help them get better in their health, whatever condition they might be in. Um, and then I mentioned how this is really, like, interesting because it basically goes against what, Ob when Obama was a president, what he established. Um, it basically contradicts uh, stopping any discrimination against Medicaid providers, such as Planned Parenthood. So basically, like, you know, the Trump administration wants to not fund Planned Parenthood anymore, and, you know, they're protected under the, the Obama administration thing, so... Um, I thought it was just really interesting using this source because it really opens up about the topic and, you know, it lets people start thinking about, you know, what's going on. So basically, um, what I did in my paper was I started by talking about the arguments against providing contraception for women. And then, after I proved that those arguments were wrong, 
I moved on to trying to prove why contraceptives are very, very beneficial for women. The most useful source that I found in this was the a source by the Gut Matcher Institute. They just have a whole body of information about anything that has to do with sexual health. Um, the best part about the Gut Matcher Institute is that they are completely unbiased. They just give the facts. And that was really great because a lot of times when you're writing these papers about things that are super, about issues that are really polarized, everybody has an opinion on them and they're trying to convince you as well. So even if they claim to be unbiased, they're still using only the facts that support their claim, whereas the Gut Matcher Institute provides unbiased flat numbers, which I really, really appreciated. Um, it gave me, it gave me really good, um, <coughs> facts like how only 59% of sexually active teenagers are using highly effective contraceptives. Um, most of them just use condoms, it turns out, um, whereas condoms should really be used in accordance with these other kinds of contraceptions like Maria IUDs, um, birth control pills, the patch, the ring, and other kinds of things. I would say how my uh, essay relates to both of your guys' is uh, basically it sets like the foundation for what they're about to talk about. Um, I basically go over, uh, you know, the ACA, what it does, uh, what exactly is it affecting, and then how it plays a role in the government, also like the HRSA, and how they are involved with it as well. Um, and then I also go into more of how uh, with women's health care, like it's already so much of a controversial topic, but also being just a woman and like trying to fight for health care, that's already hard enough. But I go into when it's like you're a different race or ethnicity or have a different uh, sexual orientation, it adds like this, it's like these double negatives just keep being thrown at you and it makes it extremely hard to uh, get affordable health care or even be offered it because um, so, like so that's like where mine goes into a little bit it kind of just like covers like people in the United States and then also like internationally but um, it relates to them because they go more into specific details so that's how mine relates <laughs> and then um, Sophie and I our topics are pretty similar as are our arguments because she's talking about Planned Parenthood and I'm talking about contraception, which Planned Parenthood provides. Um, however, more specifically, like I didn't really go into the specific channels through which women do obtain um, contraception. I was more talking just about how, in general, the government under the Affordable Care Act, like Emily said, does um, mandate that employers give um, or provide insurance that covers um, contraception without having without the women having to pay a copay. Um, so basically just easy access to contraception. Um, yeah, so contraception was one of my um, arguments in my essay because Planned, Her Planned Parenthood is a big provider of that. And it a lot of women go through Planned Parenthood to get that because it's easy and it's free. And with that, I found that a lot of like unplanned or pregnant unplanned pregnancies decreased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so it was just very beneficial. So that was only one because Planned Parenthood offers like a wide range of services. So that was one of my arguments. And then the next one was that um, it reaches a wide range of women. And like some of the some articles that I read talked about how like. Planned Parenthood only reaches women who are in, like, wealthy cities and, like, has a lot of income, when in reality they reach, like, a wide range of women globally, and um, the funding of Planned Parenthood is essential for people of, or women of, like, low-income cities. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was another, like, commonality that we had in our essays, is that, like, Banning contraception or making it really hard for women mm -hmm. to get contraception really does hurt, hurt. people who are low income oh, or yeah. people of minorities yeah, who tend definitely. to be lower income just because of the societal structure that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I we also I think both of us kind of researched and came to the consensus that you know countries that offer easier access to birth control and more comprehensive like women's mm -hmm. health care are more productive. They're better. Um, yeah. Their citizens are happier and they have lower rates of unprotected, or of, no, sorry, unprotected, <laughs> or uh, unplanned, <laughs> unplanned <laughs> pregnancies. And um, just generally, like, they're just, it's just better for the poor. 
So I think yeah. that was kind of a consensus that we all three had mm -hmm. um, throughout yeah. the course of our essays. Yeah. It's like, you know, the government's job is to, you know, make sure everyone's being given the proper health care and, you know, they're supposed to provide for all people. And so, you know, women are part of that. So they should be <laughs> looked at equally, yeah. you know, so. Are you a person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I think we're all people. I, think so I, like, I know. Cool. Yeah. So. I was just wondering if, like, just... my vagina, like, inhibited that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. So a uh, interesting term that I encountered in my research was the term HRSA, which stands for Health Resources and Service Administration. Um, basically, this is a branch of the U.S. Uh, Department of Health and Human Servants Services uh, that aims to protect all health all health care <laughs> procedures for all Americans. Um, and that is coming straight from my essay. And this term was really relevant in my essay because it. Uh, sets the stage in a way um, to like what I'm going to argue about. Um, basically, the HRSA is in charge of making sure the centers are, like health centers, are funded properly and provide health care for, and provide for all health care procedures. Um, and basically, with um, the HRSA, they are included with my thesis statement. And basically, their job is to um, they their job is to dedicate themselves to protecting healthcare for all people, and you know my argument is that you know since they're dedicated to helping all people, you know women are in that, so they need to make sure that they're doing you know everything that they can to protect the you know woman in this you know healthcare system. So this issue isn't super duper complicated and the vocabulary that comes along with it is not very technical. Um, so I think that most of the words that I found um, in research are ones that most people are already fairly familiar with. Um, that said though, I did find that there are a lot more kinds of contraception than I was actually 100% aware of before writing the, news, uh, before, before writing the, the research paper. For example, I mean, I think that a lot of people are very familiar with um, birth control pills and male condoms as forms of contraception. Um, however, those are only fee those are only a couple of different kinds. Um, the probably the most effective form of contraception for a female is an intrauterine device, um, which is actually inserted into a woman's uterus and can be, it's reusable. So obviously it's something that you don't take out for a while. So, um, depending on the brand, some of them actually inject or um, release hormones into a woman's system. Some do not. Some can be um, implanted for, you know, five years. Some can be implanted up to eight years. It just kind of depends. Um, so that's something that I wasn't 100% familiar with before writing this essay. Um, also, other forms of contraception involve the implant, which is like a little stick that's inserted into a woman's forearm, and it um, releases hormones, and those are usually good for about three years. Um, the patch, which is just put on, and it also just um, ejects hormones. <coughs> There's the vaginal ring, and... Um, there are injections like shots that you can get once a month that will, um, you know, help to regulate your um, uterus. Thanks for watching. I don't. Um, a new term that I've encountered in my research is the term defunding because Trump has been talking about defunding Planned Parenthood, but I think it's important to realize and understand what that actually means. Um, specifically, this means that the Republican health plan would prohibit those on Medicaid um, from using their coverage at Planned Parenthood, and Planned Parenthood comes from Medicaid reimbursement. So people with like a lot of, not a lot of income who rely on the federal health care coverage of um, Medicaid go to Planned Parenthood for care. Um, the local Planned Parenthood office bills that visit to Medicaid, which pays for it. Um, and Medicaid covers a variety of services through Planned Parenthood, but they don't cover abortions. And so defunding Planned Parenthood would mean that people with, it would ultimately affect people with low, little to no income because they would still have to pay for their vi visits um, at Planned Parenthood. I feel like something that uh, we can do as individuals to help uh, work towards solving this issue is definitely uh, voting. 
Uh, it is really important to pay attention to, you know, what's going on in the political world and stuff like that and listen to what people have to say, what their beliefs are, you know, or what they're um, promising to do. I think that's something really important to listen to. Um, that's what I've learned coming out of this uh, essay is that it's really important to hear um, what politicians are, you know, going to say they're going to do for healthcare, And then uh, I think it's really important that we listen to what they're going to say. Um, and then if you're a woman, really listen to like, you know, what their ideals are, uh, what their goals are, and then what they're going to do to reach those goals. Um, so I think that is just something that, uh, us as individuals can, uh, try to do is just pay attention in elections, vote, um, you know, we have an opinion, we have the right to speak it, um, and we have a right to, you know, say what we want and vote for what we choose is in our best interest. Um, I think a big part that individuals can do is advocating, um, specifically our rights to obtain affordable health care and education. Um, it's our right as individuals to stay healthy, and our level of income shouldn't get in the way of that. Um, a specific way that you can really help is donating, specifically for my article that I focused on Planned Parenthood, is you can donate to Planned Parenthood as much as you'd like to contribute as well as go to their offices to obtain health care services or education to show, like, your support for the organization. Um, also, they have, like, a letter that you can sign on their website, signing that you're one of the overwhelming majority of Americans that stand with Planned Parenthood and strongly oppose these attacks now and always. Um, so that will just help with their support of the organization. I touched on this more in essay number four. It didn't make it into the final draft of this last essay number five. But I think that a big thing that we can do is to demand an end to abstinence-only education in schools. I think that it's really important that teenagers especially are informed of the Potent, like of the um, contraceptives available to them, the importance of using contraception, as well as things like here's what you do if you think you have an STD or here's how you have a conversation with your partner about what you are and are not comfortable with. Um, it's so much more than just contraception and like here's how you put a condom on this banana. Um, and I think that it's really important. It's it's kind of a foundation for women's health care, and it's really preventative and awesome. So I think that's something that we should do. I think what I'll do differently when I approach my next research assignment is I'll definitely make sure to check the cred credibility of the authors before reading all the way through the article, because a lot of the time I found conflicting statistics about or based on what like the author stood for. And so I think it's kind of important to figure out um, which authors are actually credible before putting in the time to read the entire article. Also, I think that I should try to keep more of an open mind when reading the other side's opinions so I can, like, understand um, their perspective better so I can have a more, like, unbiased view of the issue instead of kind of, like, sticking to my own bias opinion. Uh, definitely uh, writing this essay has taught me to be really good about strategizing my essay and planning things out. Um, not only for me, that's like making an outline, and from this, I probably could make uh, even a more detailed outline for uh, f uh, future research assignments, um, and then having um, a rough draft ready to go and um, to be proofread and stuff like that, because those really help me um, organize my thoughts well. <coughs> and then also uh, something that I could do uh, for future assignments like these, I could... Um, when I need to look for uh, sources, I can do the annotated bibliography because doing that actually really helped me um, organize my thoughts and help me uh, write my essay a lot uh, smoother because what I wrote in the annotated -bibli bibliography, I could have applied also to the essay with, with the source that I was using. Um, so it was really nice to be able to like have that um, you know extra support in writing this and not be so stressed with my essay. So definitely, I will learn to uh, do more annotated bibliographies in the future. Um, so I think that if I was to do a similar paper to this, I would give myself a little bit more time um, to finish, just because it was a little stressful towards the end. Um, I think I overestimated my abilities in the sense that. You know, I'm usually pretty good at just like pounding things out. But the thing with research papers is that you have to 
it's not just writing from your own thoughts. You have to go on the internet. You have to cite sources. You have to find sources, read through them, figure out what parts of them you're going to use, and then take all of that and compact it into your essay. And so I think that it's really important to make sure you understand um, the rubric, you understand the topic, and you understand that it is going to take you a little bit more time than the normal paper.